The first thing to be aware of is that here you're not going to be taught a standardized exercise routine to follow. That's primarily because there are a lot of exercises in the book and on this DVD, and it would take a very long time to organize that into a set practice routine. Secondly, everyone's individualized health needs are different, and the book and DVD are set up so that you can select the exercises that most particularly address your health concerns, your health needs. Now, the book does give some substantial guidelines on how to make those types of selections. For the purposes of this DVD, I'd like to recommend that what you do is go through all of the exercises a couple or a few times, and then select the ones that appeal to you the most for inclusion in your personal practice. That sense of appeal that you have is your body's way of letting you know that it likes or wants or needs those particular exercises. So you definitely want to include those. Also, pay attention to any exercises that you may have a resistance to that you don't really want to do. It's a good idea to include those exercises as well because that's usually an indication that your body's being made to do something that requires some work, that's going to take some effort, and there's a little psychological resistance that comes up to doing those types of things. And that psychological resistance needs to be overcome before you're going to be able to get the benefits that you need from these exercises. There are a wider range of benefits to these exercises than might be readily apparent to you at first glance. The most obvious ones would be the physical ones as we move from body part to body part, from your internal organs to your sense organs to your glands. And even the physical benefits might be a little farther ranging than you might think at first. But there are energetic benefits too that are not really that apparent unless you've become more familiar with these types of practices. So for example, um, if you do a pitagong, or tapping and padding technique on your low back, you might understand that that's very good for low back pain and you might even understand that can benefit your kidney health, but you might not get at first glance that that would be a good exercise to include if you're working on a hearing problem, if you're working on a sexual disorder, or if you have a fearful outlook on life. Those are all things that th that exercise would be very beneficial for you to include in as part of your practice. With that understanding, you can focus more on those aspects of that particular exercise and you can also include other exercises that support those issues that you might be working on if those are important to you. Now this is too broad a topic to cover in any detail on this DVD. It is gone into in great detail in the book if you're interested in learning about it. Um, please do check out the book. But I wanted to just point this out to you now so that you don't pass over an exercise that might look unduly easy to you as something of not necessarily being beneficial. These exercises have a much wider range of benefits than you might first think. Some of the exercises taught here may look familiar to you as they may appear similar to Hatha Yoga poses. Yoga is very widespread throughout the Western world, and if you practice yoga and you see something that looks similar to a yoga pose, you might be tempted to dismiss it as something you're already familiar with and then want to move on to the next exercise in the book or the DVD. What you need to be aware of, though, is that the Chinese have long assimilated other exercises, herbs, and healing practices from many other cultures into their own culture and modified them in ways that make it their own in accordance with the Chinese holistic view of health. So for example, on the cover of my book, there's a, a pose that looks very much like the cobra. And in fact, it is very similar to the cobra, but it is an exercise that's intended to open up the dew meridian, which is an energetic meridian that runs up the center line of your back. Now the Dew Meridian governs all of the Yang Chi of your body. And you can think of Yang Chi as the Chi of all of the functionality of your body. So when you open up the Dew Meridian and when you stimulate Chi flow through the Dew Meridian, you're really having a very broad, wide impact on the health of your whole body because all of its functional energy is being impacted by opening up the Dew Meridian. You might miss that if you practice that exercise strictly as the Hatha yoga version of the cobra. So I'd encourage you 
to view each exercise at, under its own merits and with as clear, fresh eyes as you can, and do your best to avoid interpreting them through lenses of other practices that you might already know. Begin this exercise by grasping your toe firmly enough to be able to create a traction through the length of your entire foot. This will open up the joint spaces and engage the associated muscles, tendons, and ligaments. Rotate your toe side to side, rotating only to the point to which you feel some resistance, and then you reverse the direction of the rotation. You want to rotate each toe 10 to 12 times. The optimal place to grasp your toe is at the base of the nail bed, at either side of the nail bed. On most of your toes, you'll find acupuncture points there. And by stimulating those points with direct pressure, you'll be creating an energetic benefit on top of the benefit you get from stretching the muscles, tendons, ligaments, and opening up the joint spaces. As simple as this exercise might seem, it's an excellent preparation for all those for your feet that come next. Here, move your right hand above your ankle, still maintaining a traction through the whole length of your foot, and rotate your foot and toes and ankle first in one direction and then the other. This mobilizes all the muscles, tendons, ligaments, and bones through your entire foot, toes, foot, and ankles. To end this exercise, maintain a firm grasp on your toes, and then you're going to pull your fingers straight out past the tips of your toes. Here you're going to intersect the Lao Gong point at the center of your palm with the Yang Chuen point near the ball of your foot. Bending your toes back to open up the, your sole, rub your palm vigorously about 100 times over the sole of your foot. Each time Lao Gong intersects Yang Chuen, there's a small energetic stimulation to your kidneys. And additionally, the friction generates warmth, bringing more qi and blood to your foot. This hamstring stretch opens up your urinary bladder meridian. If you need, you can use a rope, a belt, or a towel to assist you in the beginning stages of this stretch. Next, once your body's open enough, you can grab your leg just above your ankle and continue to deepen your stretch. Ideally, you'll hold on to your foot, keeping your foot perpendicular to the ground. Keep your torso aligned with your extended leg so you're not leaning to the left or the right. Keep your back fairly straight until your belly or your chest touches your upper leg. And at that time, you can lower your head all the way to your lower leg, and that will arch your back some. As you lower, you don't want to be using your arms to pull yourself down. Rather, you want to be doing focused breathing. You want to direct your breath into tight areas in your leg or perhaps in your low back and on your exhalations you want to release that tension and allow yourself to lower more fully as the tension in those tight muscles releases with your breath. To come back up safely you're going to place your hands on either side of your leg and push up to avoid any possibility of straining your low back. Bring the palms of your hands together in front of you and interlock your fingers. Imagine there's a small stationary ball between the palms of your hands and then roll your hands over that ball. Keep your elbows pointed towards the ground and keep your shoulders nice and relaxed. Your hands should also be relaxed, not gripping too tightly. Reverse directions. Notice how your forearms slightly move up and down to track the movement of your rotating wrists. Beginning with this rear view, you can see that as your arms rotate rearward, your hands turn all the way out to the sides and slightly to the rear. Your shoulder blades move entirely towards your spine on the rearward motion. 
as your arms rotate forwards, your shoulder blades move as far away from your spine as is comfortably possible. This coincides with the back of your hands coming together at the front of your body. Although it might be more visible to see the movement in your hands, you should feel this movement initiated from your shoulder blades and you should feel the rotation moving through the entire length of your arms. Make a soft fist with your right hand and tap and pat along the entire surface of your left arm, being sure to include all of the yin and yang surfaces. Make sure also to tap along your shoulder and the base of your neck. Then you'll repeat the same thing on your right arm, tapping and patting with a soft left fist. The force of the pat is directed towards the center of the bones in each arm in order to break up chi stagnation in the soft tissue, so there's no need for your pat to follow any yin or yang meridian pathway, although it's fine to do that if you want. In the preparatory version of this exercise for people with tighter hips, bend your left leg so you can sit on your left heel, place your right foot to the left of your left knee, and you're gonna use your hands to move your right knee to the left. Now here you can see that your torso is facing straight forward, it's aligned in the same direction as your legs, so you're not putting really any twist in your low back at this point, merely opening your hips. For the full version of this exercise, in the sideways position, you'll see that your legs are in exactly the same position as they were in the preparatory stage. But now you're going to take your left elbow and put it to the right of your right knee. You're going to place your right fist on the ground to the side of your right hip. Your left elbow is going to pull your right knee rearward. Your right fist pushes into the ground and pushes slightly forward to move your right shoulder rearward. And this gives you that 90 degree twist in your torso that you can see here. This can be a very strong stretch, so be careful not to strain. Form your hands into tiger's claws as shown here with straight wrists and your fingers hooked. Starting at the front of your hairline, rake backwards with your tiger's claws in three sets of three lines. So here you can see there's a middle line, slightly out from the middle, and then all the way to the side. From this rear view, you can see where your fingers end at each rake. They end at that point regardless of whether you're raking along the more central line or along the line more to the sides of your head. This brings more chi and blood to your head in a general way and stimulates more chi flow primarily through the urinary bladder and gallbladder meridians. Locate these acupressure points by feeling for depressions along the inner surface of the bony ridge that surrounds your eyes. Most of these points are very, very close to your eyeball. The one exception is the one that's coming up right now. If you go straight out from the corners of your eyes, you'll feel a depression in the bone there. To get the upper points, use the pads of your thumbs. As you can see here, this first point is very close to the bridge of your nose near the corner of your eye. And you use the pads of your thumbs directing upward pressure and apply circular motion. Here, you're at a point that's about three quarters of the way out to the sides of your eyes, again using the pads of your thumbs. You'll feel a distinct depression there, and there may be some discomfort, there may be a little bit of pain that just indicates that there's stagnation that needs to be released. Here, you're below your pupils, more or less, and you can see with your fingers going inside the bony ridge surrounding your eyes, you'll pull your eyelids down a little bit. The main purpose is to feel for the indentations in that bony ridge around your eyes. So if your upper eyelid is pulled up or your lower eyelid is pulled down, that's one indication that you're probably on the right spot. This last point is called Tai Yang, and it's a very commonly used acupuncture point for benefiting the eyes.